Okay, back again in the workshop. And uh, this morning I'm going to try again with playing around with some uh, lettering. And uh, I'm going to continue my experiments with this uh, piece of mulberry wood that I picked up. If you uh, watched my seagull episode, uh, you see that I found this piece of mulberry, rather cheap, and hadn't done much with it, but it's a nice thick piece. It's about an inch, inch and a quarter uh, thick of wood. And uh, watching one of my favorite TV shows the other day, Rawhide, and thought it might make a nice sign uh, using the technique I used on the seagull, that is sculpting. What I'm going to do is sculpt these letters after I cut them out of this piece of mulberry. And uh, I'll put this pattern down below if you want to play around with it also and make one of these signs. Uh, I'm going to take the letters and cut them out uh, just based on this image that I took off the screen. And uh, then I'm going to sculpt them down as I did with the seagull. Probably glue them to some kind of a backing to make it look like a nice... Uh, rustic uh, cowboy sign. Um, if you want to try this, you're welcome to do so. Uh, you can follow along with me as I work on this. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this pattern down to size a little bit and then uh, take the piece of wood, cut that down to size too, and then uh, apply the pattern to the wood and use my scroll saw, which I usually do, to uh, make this sign. So let's get started here. All right, I've cut this uh, piece of mulberry down to size and also cut the pattern out as well. So what I want to do now is take our trusty painter's tape, which I always use, and put this over the board for cutting purposes. Cut down on some of the wood burn, I guess. I'm not even going to sand this down or anything. I'd like this to be as rough and rustic as possible for this sign going to be a real uh, rough tough sign by the time we're through here. So I put this uh, tape down on here to help with the cutting. It lubricates the blades a bit. <clears throat> and then we're going to take this and we're going to gooey up the back with some uh, glue stick as I usually do. We'll put it down on here. Alright, I'm back here now on I got the back of this nice and sticky. So that puts this uh, right down here on the board. What we're going to do is cut these letters out because we're going to want to sculpt them. And I think it'll be a lot easier sculpting them if I, uh, if I cut them out individually. I could do it as a one piece sign, but I'm thinking maybe it would be easier to work on the uh, sander, the belt sander later, for sculpting purposes. Put a little more glue on here to stick that part down. Okay. Alright, now what we're going to do is uh, drill some entry holes uh, using my drill press. There's some these are the entry holes I'm going to put in the inside cuts, the interior cuts. And I'll have one big entry hole, just so one entry hole so I can do all the outside later. So I'll go do that on the drill press right now. And I'll meet you back at the uh, scroll saw. Okay, we're back at the scroll saw. I see you're getting to know your way around my shop pretty good. Found your way to the scroll saw with no difficulty at all. And uh, what I've got in here is a number five blade, a uh, reverse tooth blade. And I'm going to try that. I think it, this is a pretty thick piece of wood, but the, the wood is very, very light. It feels uh, like a very light wood. So I think it will cut through this without too much difficulty. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to try cutting out the interior cuts first. And then uh, we'll do each of the individual letters separately later on. So first of all, let me take uh, this out of here. Pop that up with my foot 
blister. And we'll put this right in the middle. We'll do the inside of the R first. We'll see how this works. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way here. I know I'm blocking the view sometimes, but it's almost impossible at some point. Let me bring this in a little closer. Get a better view of cutting. Not that there's anything spectacular being done here, but we'll see how it goes. All right. We have about three quarters speed. Out. Okay, got that out of there. No problem. Got a little bit of burning here in the wood. Probably the blade is getting a little worn out. I think I'm gonna put a new blade in here because uh, the, the tape should be fit a bit and I think it's probably about time we changed it. Um, a word about the pattern here too. Let me back this off a little bit. Uh, the pattern is just a screenshot that I did off of TV, off of TV and um, all I did was print it out to a uh, 14 by eight and a half sheet of legal size paper made it a good size printout and um, then I just as you saw I just glued it down to the board but I'm just going to be cutting around this this is going to be the original design you saw on TV and uh, nothing added to it so what I'm going to do is change this blade I think this is definitely not working it's burning the wood and we smells like burned popcorn now instead of regular popcorn. And some soot on the uh, tabletop there. I hadn't realized it was burning that much when I was doing it, but it is now. So I think maybe I'll switch up to a, a number seven. Okay, we've got a, uh, a number seven reverse tooth here. I'll pop that in here. And we'll see if this takes care of the burning problem. I'm going to do another internal. In, internally, you probably wouldn't notice it that much, but externally, you'll probably see the burning better. We don't want that. So, we'll take this now and we'll put it through the A. Let's give this a try and see how it does. Pop it right in there. To the top clamp here. Tighten it down and bring this in a little closer. You can see the amazing cutting job I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <clears throat> except on maybe a little bit of a turn here. But otherwise, not a problem. Okay, let's go and cut out the last internal piece, which is in the D. Blade's cutting a lot better now, too. It's a sharper blade and a number seven. Take on this big chunk of wood, no problem. Popped out on its own. It's a nice smooth cut. 
a thick piece of wood like this, you'd sometimes get that slanting of the cut, but this is cutting really smooth. The wood is nice and light. It cuts really with a number seven blade, evidently. All right, let's go uh, and start cutting out these letters now. I'm all done with the internal cuts. We'll cut out each letter separately. And we'll take her over later on and do some of our fancy sculpting. All right, let's take this R out. We got a nice letter R here to begin our work. Came out pretty good. Um, notice you're, you're not cutting a really fine line pattern here. You're just making the best you can of this thing. So take that off now. Toss it away. And we have the R of our rawhide. <clears throat> We're going to uh, work that over later, but let's cut out the rest of these letters first. Maybe I'll uh, just skip all of this on the video and I'll come back when I'm done and show you all the final letters and how they look. Go take a rest for a while. Okay, it looks like we've accomplished our mission here of cutting these letters out. They're nice and chunky at this point. Now what I want to do is take them over to the belt sander and do some shaping and some uh, what I call sculpting. I'll take you over there and show you how I do this. Um, I did this also in that uh, little uh, table ornament with a seagull on it and it worked out pretty good. I think it's going to look pretty good here after we get all these letters uh, shaped up. So let's go over there. Alright, we're over here at the uh, bench sander. And what we're going to do is uh, turn this thing on. It's about 150 grit, well worn of course. But as we spin the belt around, we're going to take these letters and gouge them into the belt. Make some kind of a, what looks like, a sculpting pattern on the letters. We're only going to do the front sides. The back we're probably going to stand, uh, put on a board so we're going to leave that flat. Not sure about that yet, but I think we'll probably leave it flat anyways. But the rest of it we're going to try doing some shaping. So let's go to work here. Okay, let me back this off a little bit. And you'll be able to see these the letters here. Um, you can see it's got some kind of shape to it now. Looks a little bit rustic. You want to be careful if you're going to do this. Of course, you don't want to get your nails on there. You'll do a pretty quick manicure job if you do. Uh, also, you don't want to catch your hand on there at all. So if you're going to use this method, uh, be very, very careful with it. Uh, you could also do the same thing with a sandpaper or maybe even a file. 
you want to try that. I find this to be the fa fastest way to do this. So, so I'm going to do the rest of these letters now and we'll see what they come out like after we're done. We may end up using uh, another sander also, the, um, <clears throat> the oscillating sander, to uh, get in between the insides here, which you can't seem to really do on this. But maybe not. We'll see. Okay, over at the workbench now, and uh, take a look at these letters. They look nicely worked over. Got uh, rounding around pieces, burned edges, scraped edges, a little bit of everything on there. I'm going to take them over to my final sander, and that's the uh, mop sander, and we'll smooth all of this out, make it look... Uh, fairly decent and see what they look like then. Okay, here at the mop sander, we're going to take our letters and run them over the mop sander and smooth out all these rough edges here. Okay, we give it somewhat of a polished uh, finish on there. It's going to look better later on, of course, but uh, I'm going to do this to all the rest of these now. Okay, we polished these up on the uh, mop sander, and they're looking pretty good. They have a nice rough look to them, and yet they're smooth. They have uh, an effect that sort of indicates that maybe I used a knife to carve them out of wood. Uh, it's a fake way of carving, of course, but it seems to work pretty good. Now I've got to decide just what I'm going to use for a back. I think uh, probably a lighter colored board uh, with maybe some kind of a border around it. Maybe not, and we'll see how this thing looks when we start to put that together. Let's go take a look through the wood pile and see what I can find. Okay, I found uh, <clears throat> this piece of uh, maple in the scrap pile. It's a lighter color than the mulberry, of course, and it's very rough uh, wood. I toyed with the idea of maybe uh, sanding it down, making it nice and smooth, but I don't think so. I think maybe we ought to leave it nice and rough, and uh, we'll attach these letters with glue. Um, might make it look like they're done with nails, but I think I might end up using glue on them anyways. I'm going to leave the board the way it is, and then we'll just put a, a clear coat finish over everything. See how that rough finish handles that... Uh, clear coat. So I'm going to put some glue on these right now and stick them down, I think. wood lay it down on top of that and I keep uh, an old vise that came apart nice and heavy it weighs a ton things just like this put that right down on top and uh, 
wait a few hours that thing will be as solid as can be come back take a look at it do some spraying we can finish up this project finished up the uh, rawhide sign uh, the gluing came out very nice and I gave it a good uh, coating of clear spray so it looks like it's uh, pretty well set put some holes in the side probably hang it up on the wall or you could stand it up on a table from the looks of it here seems to be standing up very nicely well that finishes that project off uh, if you like this uh, click the little like button down below there and remember that the pattern is also uh, listed down below too not much of a pattern because as I said I just took it off of a TV screen but uh, I'm sure you can work your way around it if you really want to um, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching